we're just getting really worried. We need some rain badly and we need some green grass and this late in the year, I don't think we're getting it. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker Cross Center's Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you guys for watching. It's a beautiful morning here. It's actually starting to feel cool in the mornings now. We're in the 60s here in southern Oklahoma. And I love it, but it gets hot later in the day. But something I've been wanting to talk to you guys about, and you know I've mentioned it, is we've had a hot and dry summer here, just like a lot of the part of the western half of the United States has. We are in a drought. It, this has been a tougher summer than we've had recently here in the past we've just been Kevin and I we've been getting really worried about grass and how much is left part of our rotation with the big herd here with Big Joe the cows and the calves uh, this big herd we've been able to rotate between three pastures we've needed more recovery time on some of these pastures but now we're just getting really worried we need some rain badly and we need some green grass and this late in the year I don't think we're getting it Guys, what I want to talk to you about today is the drought conditions. What are some things that we can do to try to help when it comes to grazing? A lot of you ask me these questions all the time. How many bison can you have per acre? One of the things that you got to think about is where you're located. That's the most important thing to start off. Here in Southern Oklahoma, we're about four or five acres per head. On this land, to be honest with you, I've got too many bison. I, l I love bison and you know, I had some opportunities to get some more like Big Joe and Kit and Flo. Uh, and then you have Baby. So we've got a total of 27 right now. And on these paddocks that we're running this big herd on, they're about anywhere from five to seven acre lots that we've fenced off. Dunbar. Dunbar's making racket. Most important part about rotational grazing is the recovery time uh, of those paddocks that you've been grazing. And we haven't had a lot of recovery time that we would like to have just because of the lack of rain and the drought that we're in. So I want to talk to you about a couple of things that you can do to try to help the bison. And a lot of guys do this differently and it depends on where you are in this part of the country. But as far as rotational grazing, uh, regenerative ag, whatever you want to call it. If you don't have a lot of grass, there's a lot of things that you can do to help supplement for the bison so that they're staying healthy and they're getting everything they need to be healthy in a hot and dry summer. All right guys, we're gonna go down to the pasture and put out some mineral, some Bison 90 Redmond mineral. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that. I think they're gonna get excited since I'm gonna go down in the pasture. We'll see how they do. What do you think? You guys ready? You excited? Hey guys, something I wanted to mention to you down here in the pasture now, hanging out with the bison. A couple of things that you can do. One of the things that you can, it's a simple thing and it's not very expensive at all. So really, regardless of the time of year, 
uh, especially in the summertime, another thing that you can do to try to help maintain the bison's health, even in a drought, even in winter, whatever the conditions are, is right now we're putting out bison 90. Bison 90, a trace mineral from a Redmond Minerals. This also comes in a block form. I've been using trace minerals, but what I've noticed is it's gotten hotter in the summer, they've been eating the minerals more. Just whatever mother nature is not providing them through the grass and through the ground, Redmond Minerals will come through for you and will provide all those minerals that the bison need to get through the tough conditions. I have a little partnership with Redmond. You guys can actually get a 15% discount. Use the coupon code Dumbar when you go to the link in my description. It's always there. You can check it out anytime. Any of the Redmond Mineral products, go check their website out. I think it's the only one out there that actually does anything specifically designed for bison. This is Bison 90, which is a higher concentrate of selenium. One thing that we need to do here is we need to do soil samples on this place and we'll be able to really see what is missing here. And you guys can do that too. You may have already done it before. You can check what's going on under the surface and see what minerals that you need that these animals aren't getting. I like to use this um, when Dunbar's not in here <laughs> because I have to use the heavy duty troughs. You typically have to use that with bison. I've got one sitting over here but it's in this paddock currently that the bison aren't in. We've got them rotating over here and up here in this paddock. So if Dunbar's in here, we can't use this, but I'm gonna use this for now. You guys are excited, aren't you? Probably not gonna go after it right now. They uh, they expect cubes, <laughs> which is definitely tastier. Talking about drought, that's one thing right there. Put minerals out. That will help the balance of the animal's gut and kind of keep them, keep those minerals in, keep those elements going inside the body, and that'll keep an animal healthy for somewhat in drought conditions. Uh, another thing that we do, which can be obviously more expensive is feed we're not supplement feeding right now but right now we are bringing them cubes kevin and my mom appreciate their help by the way marissa and i aren't here uh, mom and kevin come out here and check the bison and and give them these cubes and whatnot so i want to thank mom and kevin for coming out here and taking care of them when we're not here So yes, you guys have seen these before. Putting out these cubes, I think will help. Also, it just keep them, give them something, even though they're still grazing and there's not as much grass as you want there to be, you can still come out here and give them these cubes. You don't have to feed them too much, but I think it's important just to try to keep these guys as healthy as possible. We're not feeding them 50 pound sack fulls. Um, we're not doing that. We're just giving them a little bit here at a time and that's why they follow me in the green machine follow kevin around in the green machine they know what it is the ranger want you to know we're not leaving our little princess out also want to mention the other day I was down here I was checking the big herd I saw something that I really loved <laughs> I saw Big Joe courting Eleanor that is a good sign you know you always kind of worry about Eleanor a little bit she's our special one but I did see Big Joe down here courting her which was uh that's fun to see It's fun to watch him because every time that you come down here, one week at a time, he's always got a different female 
he's courting. Speaking of breeding season, we should be wrapping it up. So breeding season, in case you guys didn't know, breeding season starts in July typically. Here it does, and I think most of the country it starts in July. But it, it runs from about July, August, and can even go into September. So right now, that's where we're at. We should be wrapping up breeding season by now. I would say, if you do the math, a lot of the breeding last year with Dunbar with this herd, last year happened in July because we had most of our babies in this May. Looks like he bred them all in July. <laughs> chasing some off. And they had them in May. So that's what we want. We'd rather have them early in the summer than in the middle of the summer when it's really hot, July. We don't want that at all. We'd rather have them early. When you see the ground crack, you know it's hot and dry. A lot of you may be experiencing that as well. I know a lot of you have been. It's so hot and dry in America right now, in the western half at least. We're dealing with fires. Farmers are struggling for grass and whatnot, or hay. So we stocked up on hay this year already. We've already had one cut off of mine and Daniel's place. And then we're also hopefully gonna get another cut here pretty soon. I know it still looks green out here and we do have some grass. They're grazing pretty low. You don't want them to graze it too low. Uh, you're gonna really damage the root system and which affects the soil, which is the most important part of the grazing because you gotta take care of the soil. But there is some grass. There's still a lot of Bermuda left, which is still not their favorite. Um, but you can see definitely we're getting low. So something else that you can do as part of getting low on grass and dealing with a drought is you can put out hay. We've got hay, but if you need to, you can go ahead and put out hay. There's a couple of things you can do. And these are a couple of things that we do. Some people may do it different. You can supplement feed, you can put out hay, minerals. That's just something that you can always put out uh, just to keep the bison healthy. Or you can supplement feed uh, and giving them cubes, you know, once a day or a couple times a week. That just keeps those guys fresh, keeps them healthy. And, and the most important part of a drought or most important part about an animal's health is you got to come check them. You got to watch them and make sure uh, you just got to keep your eye on them. And the more time that you spend with them, you check them you see their body you don't know what's going on inside that body but you can tell if something starts to change on the outside and so the more that you pay attention to your animals you'll understand what's going on and if you start to see some changes and it keeps going downhill well you got a problem speaking of that speaking of bison's health we are going to work our bison scheduled in october which is pretty soon less than a month away we're going to work our bison for our fall handling and here and this is the biggest herd we've had we've got 27 bison right now seven babies so what that means for these little calves is those guys will start the weaning process they'll be at six months old and they will start the weaning process once we get them pulled off of mama this is the unfortunate part about raising animals is you can't control the weather you, you can't control the conditions and this is unfortunate and it's unfortunate for a lot of people here i don't think we're in as bad as drought is some parts of the country dealing with even more conditions than what we're dealing with here it's even bad up in canada i've got a friend up there named les kroger i've met les several years ago when i first started raising bison and i met him at a bison conference but i talked to les the other day and they're such in a bad drought up there and even parts of uh, Montana or Wyoming, a lot of people are having to sell their animals. That's the worst part of the drought. You know that the conditions are bad whenever you've got to sell your animal. That's the worst thing that can happen. And that's very unfortunate and that sucks for farmers. And I know cattle people do the same thing and have to deal with the same things. I have heard and I have seen of people having to sell bison because of a drought, because of the overgrazing and there's not enough grass for them. That is tough, and I hope that we don't ever have to face that condition. Something you got to grind through, something that uh, you just have to learn how to manage, and this is something that we just 
have to deal with part of raising animals and we're gonna do the best we can to take care of our animals and make sure that they're healthy when it's hot and it's dry whatever the extreme may be you learn from it and you try to make things better you try to manage your land so that you don't run into these conditions and even if you manage your land you still are gonna run into these conditions no matter what you do and I think about all the farmers out there I think about all the bison ranchers and other parts of the country that are dealing with these conditions and have for years and I hope that they're able to still take care of their animals the best they can I know they are and I hope that their animals are okay we just give uh, credit to those guys that are working hard to try to manage these animals the best the way that they can and keep them as healthy as possible just like we're trying to do right here in southern Oklahoma got a couple announcements for you guys I'm super excited about my wife and I and her brother Austin he's a world traveler um, you've seen Austin Austin helped me build the barn here uh, last summer what's up big Joe hey buddy here in a couple weeks we are actually traveling to South Dakota we are going to Custer State Park I am gonna be in the actual annual bison roundup I'm so excited I I met uh, the gentleman he's actually the vice president of the National Bison Association and he's also the head herd manager over the Custer State Park herd. His name's Chad Kramer. He's a guy I met at the National Bison Association Winter Conference in Rapid City this year. Nice guy, excited to get to know him a little bit more. But I hooked up with him. I've seen this roundup on video and I've always just want to be a part of it. Just running with the bison and I'm just really excited about it. They have horseback and then they also have a truck. I'm not going horseback, I don't ride horses, but they have a part of this roundup at Custer State Park. They round them up every year and they bring them closer and closer because it's a big state park. So they have to go out, round these animals up, bring them in. And as part of keeping the population stable and not having a too high of a population to damage the environment there at Custer State Park, they bring in those bison closer and closer and they round them up and then they sort them out and they actually have a cell every year the cell is in november i'm going to ride along in a truck as part of this drive it's going to be a little wild west i'm i'm super pumped about it just to just to even be a part of this but i had to apply for it i'm going to go in a truck and i'm going to be a part of the actual drive and i'll bring you along with me on that and uh, i hope you guys are excited because uh, it's gonna be a show for sure and I can't wait. I've, I've just seen video of it So I can't imagine actually being in those vehicles and uh, And riding around with them. So uh, we're gonna travel up there We're actually just gonna spend a week vacation hanging out up in that area of part of South Dakota I've never been up there. We're gonna go visit some places I'm actually gonna visit Chad Kramer's uh, ranch that he runs um, And he has his own private bison herd there. So we're gonna go see Chad we're going to do some touring and whatnot with Marissa and Brooks and Austin and uh, kind of a little family vacation. So uh, guys, be, be ready. I hope you're ready and I hope you're excited to uh, come along with me on the roundup. And if you haven't, search into it a little bit. Check it out. See what it's about. Um, it should be a fun event and I'm going to bring you guys along with me. Obviously, I won't have the videos out until after all that's happened and whatnot. Hey, Peaches. Well, thank you guys for watching today's video, getting caught up on a lot of stuff and some big announcements. We got some stuff happening with Cross Timbers Bison Herd. My wife and I have been working on, got some more gear coming, guys. Got some more shirts, I promise. We'll get it out to you. And for this fall weather that we're uh, sneaking in, I feel it. It's these cooler mornings, I'm loving it. So you guys be ready for the Custer State Park Bison Roundup, the annual roundup. Hope you guys are excited. I'm real excited and anxious to uh, just go up there and visit that country. Never been up there before. And then also just go and be a part of that experience as well. And if you haven't, guys, subscribe to us. Come follow us along. Raising the American Bison right here in southern Oklahoma. Just trying to grow the herd. Thank you, guys.
maya, i think they're on shiro, yeah.